Hey everyone, welcome. This is Tara Lynn. I am the artist behind Paint, Rinse, Repeat, and today we are painting Sweet Angel. It is your November bonus painting, so welcome. I'm excited to paint with you. Um, I'm just going to change my screen here so you can see what's going on at my desk. There we go. Let me just zoom this down. All right, so here is my sweet angel. You can see I'm kind of using a messy canvas. Uh, I was going to use this for something else and ended up not using it, so I don't like to be wasteful. Um, so that's what's going on there. Um, let me get my supplies organized here. All right, let's get started. Waiting for a few people to hop on. Um, I hope your November has been going well. I can't believe it's halfway over. Somebody mentioned um, to me yesterday that Thanksgiving is next week. I am so not ready. Um, but at the same time, I'm kind of ready to have some turkey. So there's that. Um, anyway, so before we get started, um, I am going to throw up the image here. Um, so this angel can be done a lot of different ways. Um, so feel free to kind of make her your own. Um, I'm going to be doing the blue version. I've got the red version up here so you can see and make the necessary changes, but this is a really easy painting um, to change up and maybe match your decor and whatnot. Um, the supply list here, when it lists the colors, lists the colors you would need for both. So just substitute what you need um, for what you plan on doing or, you know, add whatever colors you like. Um, I am going to be painting on a 12 by 16 canvas today. And um, you also have tracers for an 8 by 10 and a 16 by 20. So feel free to use uh, whatever size you'd like. Um, as far as paint colors, um, white and black I use for almost everything. Um, I've got a brown, going to use that for the hair. If you want blonde hair, you can use the yellow ochre, which is also listed. Um, yellow ochre is just kind of a brownish yellow. Um, I've got phthalo blue. That's what I'll be using, <coughs> excuse me, both for my background and my dress. Um, if you want to do the red version, we've got a deep turquoise for the background. Um, what else do we got here? Deep red, um, that is used uh, for the dress. And then I've got green. Um, red and green are also going to be used for a little bit of the accent in the hair. Um, I've got metallic gold. We're going to use that to add some zhuzh to the feathers. And I think that's all the colors. Um, again, I always say this. Um, for my acrylic paintings. Um, you need water available to wash your brushes, paper towels, um, a paint palette or something to put your paint on. Um, for this, you're going to also need a palette knife um, and paint brushes in various sizes. I use small, medium, and large rounds and flats. Um, also, with this lesson, um, if you have a heat gun or hair dryer available, um, you can grab that. It'll speed along the process. And then if you need to get the transfer transferred, you'll need carbon paper, um, or you can scribble on the back of your tracer with a pencil. Um, I'm going to go grab a palette knife, and then I will be right back, and we will get started.
All right, so here's my palette knife. Sorry about that. Um, there's always something I forget. That's just how it goes sometimes. All right, let me make sure I'm live in all the right places. There we go. All right, wonderful. The first thing I'm gonna do is block out some color. And um, so I'm going to use phthalo blue for my background. If you want to do the, the red version, um, that's just a dark teal. So I'm gonna get some phthalo blue on my palette there. I'm also gonna get a little bit of white on my palette. And I'm gonna get a little bit of black on my palette. And I'm gonna get a large flat brush. Um, and what I'm gonna do is just kind of put down my initial color on the background, which is phthalo blue. And I'm just gonna put a nice thin coat of this. We are gonna go right over this again um, and add kind of a mixture. Don't worry about this layer being perfect. Like I said, we're just blocking out color at this point. All right, so I've planned out um, my background here, which is gonna be blue. Um, I'm also gonna do my dress in blue, and I'm gonna use different a different shade of blue, but again, just blocking in my color. So just gonna add a layer of this blue right down the middle of the dress. If you're doing the red dress, you would switch to the deep red to add that layer.
All right, so now I'm gonna rinse off this brush. I am going to get some yellow ochre on my palette. And I want a nice clean brush for this. So you can either switch brushes or use another brush. All right, so what I'm gonna do with the yellow ochre um, is I'm gonna lay down my base color for the <clears throat> excuse me, the belt, um, and also the wings. And if you're going to be doing blonde hair, you can go ahead and do that as well. Put it on her hair. There's one wing, then we're going to do the other wing. All right, and I'm going to grab some brown for the hair. Oops. All right, so just laying down these colors um, is just going to help us get a little more depth in our painting. Um, so this is kind of our underpainting here. Um, again, if you wanted blonde hair, you could use the yellow ochre for that. And I'm just going to add just a smidge of white in here. Most, uh, you know, the canvas is white and that's white, so I'm not too worried about that. All right. Now I'm gonna get a uh, large flat brush and we're gonna start working on the background. So um, how I'm gonna differentiate the background from the dress is that I'm going to use blue um, and black on the dress. I'm gonna use blue with a pinch of white on the background. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start working with this background section by section. Um, and I'm going to just start here in the lower left and I'm going to add a bunch of blue, another layer of blue. Then I'm going to dip my corner in white and I'm just going to kind of use big bright strokes and blend that in. And I'm going to repeat this process through the entire background. And you can make your background, um, as bright with the lighter blue as you want to. I'll probably keep it pretty tame and kind of blend most of that in.
And then I'm just going to move up along the painting and add a second layer on the background. Easy peasy. This painting is very relaxing. There's just a lot of fun, big brush strokes. Now, there's really no requirement for the background, but what I would do is just kind of look at it um, and make sure it's balanced. Like you want to have um, a balance between the amount of white and the amount of blue on both sides, a balance between the amount of brush strokes you can see and the amount of blending. Um, it doesn't need to be perfect. I actually like um, if there's kind of some patches of lightness and some patches of blue, um, but you can adjust it to your liking. So if you like it more blended, go ahead and blend it. If you like, you know, these bright patches, go ahead and leave that there. So that was the background. Um, I'm going to get more Thalo blue, I need lots of thalo blue. I'm gonna switch from my great big brush to my um, medium size flat here. Um, and we are gonna start adding our second layer onto the uh, dress here. All right, so what I'm gonna do for this, um, I'm gonna work top section first and then I'm gonna work my way down. Um, so I am going to dip in my phthalo blue and the first part I'm gonna do is this hood. So I'm gonna add a complete layer of blue first. All right, um, now I don't need to clean up my brush, but I'm gonna dip into a little bit of white and I'm just gonna pull a little highlight around the bottom of that hood. All 
All right, now most of this hood is going to be blue. And what I'm gonna do is right underneath this fluffy area, I'm gonna dip into a little black and a little blue, probably like two times the amount of blue to the amount of black. We wanna create kind of a nice deep navy and I'm gonna blend that deep color up here under kind of where that um, fluffy white layer would be. So I've got kind of that light shadow, I've got blue in the middle, and then I've got some black shadow up here. So you can kind of see that gradient. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is dip right into my black paint and right underneath this hood, there's gonna be another shadow. So I'm gonna add black right to that and pull that down, wipe off my brush, then dip into some blue and fill in that blue layer. So that gets nice deep dark shadow in that area. And that's how we create depth in that garment, in that hood and that dress. All right, so I'm gonna wipe off my brush. Next thing I'm gonna do is dip in some black. I'm gonna pull some black down the edge of the dress and under this wing. All right, and while that's wet, I'm gonna dip into my blue and I'm gonna add the blue right up to that line, picking up some of that black pulling it outward into the blue to create that shadow area. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the right side, pulling black down the edge of the dress and then around those wings. Wiping off my brush and then going right into that blue and pulling those two colors together. Then I'm gonna wipe off my brush and I'm just gonna add this phthalo blue in the middle here. The process is the same with the red. If you're doing red, you just use the red instead of the blue. And I know it's a little hard to see because of that glare. Let me see if I can put something under my canvas to show you minus the glare. All right, here we go. So as it dries, you'll be able to see it a little better. But this is what I have for that dress. So the edges are darker. The center is just pure phthalo. And then while I've got some of this on my brush, I'm gonna add a little white right down the middle and just kind of blend that in a bit. That just gives it a little more dimension. Thank you. 
I'm not real happy with that blend. I like that better, but the amount that you blend, again, totally up to you. Good morning, Deanna, how are you? Glad you could hop on with us. Sorry it took me so long to respond. Sometimes I get painting and I forget to say hi. I'm just gonna clean up my belt just a pinch there um, cause I got some blue up in <clears throat> my yellow ochre. All right. So what I'm going to do now, um, is I am going to add the layer on the wings. Um, but before I do that, I want some of this blue to dry. Um, so I'm just going to pull out my dryer and zap this, um, quickly and try to get some of this to dry. So I'm not pulling, um, these deep, dark colors into my wings. All right, we are going to put a layer of gold in these wings. And um, so the reason why I use that yellow ochre first is because when we put gold on top of it, um, it has a nice base, base layer. Um, it's going to make that gold pop. If we were to put gold on top of the white, um, it would really uh, not... Uh, show the full beauty of that gold. It would really uh, be transparent and kind of see through and we wouldn't see the gold color um, as much. So, all right, let me get this, my brush nice and clean. I'm gonna keep using this um, medium size flat brush here. And now I'm just gonna add a layer of gold onto my wings.
All right, the other area that gets gold is this belt. Um, on the red version, um, I did not <clears throat> use as, quite as much gold, but I want the belt to be gold. So I'm gonna add the gold in there as well. So as you can see, I can still see through my gold paint and that's fine. Um, but I'll show you just quickly um, on the back here. When we add gold to the white, it's just not as vibrant. Like it's still gold, but when you add it with that yellow ochre underneath, look at the difference. It's so bright. So anytime I use gold, um, I always add that under layer. All right, I'm gonna let the gold dry for a bit. We are gonna work on the hair. Um, now I mentioned I'm gonna do brown hair. You can do whatever color you want. I'm gonna use a round brush just because of the shape of the head. I think it'll be a little easier. Um, so I'm gonna add another layer of brown paint and kind of clean up these edges to the hair. So whatever color you're using, add another layer. All right, and then what I'm gonna do um, first, so I'm gonna grab some of this black again, um, and underneath the top part of the head and kind of the bottom where the hair is coming down, I'm gonna add a shadow right into that brown with the black. Then what I'm gonna do is pick up some black um, at the top of the head. I'm gonna add some lines following the shape of the head and then I can dip right into the brown paint and kind of blend those out a little bit. Then I'm gonna dip into the yellow ochre and I'm gonna add, oops, a little bit of the lighter tone and blend that in. And you can blend into your hair color until you're happy. So if you want it lighter, you can make it lighter. If you want it darker, you can make it darker. But what you want is kind of just sections um, where you can kind of see the pattern of hair there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing underneath and I'm gonna follow the shape of that pattern. So under there, it's kind of straight lines that kind of go out to the sides. I'm gonna use black first, then I'll come in with that brown, kind of work out some of those shadows and lines. And then a few highlights with the yellow. I love it, that is so pretty. All right, so I'm gonna let my hair dry a little bit. Um, my wings are still a little wet, but I'm gonna go ahead and zap those, zap everything with my heat gun. We're gonna move on to some white accents.
All right, I am mostly dry. Um, there's always gonna be a reflection from the wings because metallic is reflective. Um, but what I'm gonna do now um, is we're gonna start working up the wings and then we're gonna work up this area here. Um, so I'm gonna dip into some white. I'm gonna stick with this small round brush and I'm gonna fill um, the inside of my wings. So I'm gonna wipe some of this off. I don't want my brush too saturated. Um, and what I'm gonna do, I've got very, very little paint on my brush. Um, and I'm just gonna fill in these long sections of feather. I'm gonna start kind of at the bottom. You can start at the top if you want. Um, but it's almost kind of um, a rustic-y vintage look. Let's see, I'm gonna pull this down. And let's see if I can make an angle. Um, <clears throat> so as I do this, I'm gonna leave the edges gold. And I'm going to let the paint run out on my brush so that it's not real crisp. So I hope that kind of translates on camera here. Of course, there isn't only one way to do this. If you want a nice clean layer of white, you can do that as well. But I kind of like this scratchy layer that we've got going on here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. way too much paint on my brush there. There we go. All right, so I've got my layer of white on my wings. I'm gonna let that dry. I'm gonna clean off my brush. Before I move up there, I'm just gonna add a little bit of um, shadowing on the belt. So I'm gonna pull some brown paint 
Um, it can even be brown with a, a tinge of black. And I'm just going to kind of pull a line on the bottom and on the top. Um, it just gives that a little more, a little more something. All right, up here, we are going to kind of stipple in a way. So I'm going to get a, a pinch of black and I'm going to add a couple little dots of black around that edge there. I'm going to wipe off my brush and I'm going to go right into the white. And I'm going to start by just tapping my white on there. And it's going to pick up a little bit of that black and blend that in and make it look like there's texture. Because while this is white, there's going to be some shadow in there. All right, next I'm going to get a little bit of red and a little bit of green on my palette. Um, and you don't need very much of this, just the tiniest bit. I actually probably could just use it right from the lid. And that would save me a little bit of mess. All right, so I've got my red and green out. I'm going to focus on this area here. I'm going to get a paintbrush and I'm going to use the wrong end of my paintbrush and I'm going to make some dots up here, uh, kind of in that uh, part of her hair, almost like she's got a headband that comes around the back. So I'm going to add some with the green first. Wipe off the end of that brush. Now I'm going to do the red. So I've got some little embellishments around her hair. I'm liking that. Um, it is definitely more subtle um, on the dark hair than it is on the light hair, but either way, I absolutely love it. Got some paint chips, paint flakes. All right, I'm gonna lift this back up. Give me just a second here. I 
to get focused. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do um, is clean up the edges of that gold. And so I've got a nice small brush and I'm going to dip right into my gold paint. Um, now most of this white is dry or dry enough and I'm going to clean up the edges. So um, because I was kind of scratchy with that white, I'm going to clean up the gold and I'm really going to make them look like individual feathers. So just showing you from one feather to the other, when you clean it up, it just helps to find that feather a little bit. Also going around the top part, and then I'm going to move right on over to the left side and do the exact same thing. All right, so my wings are nice and cleaned up. And we're kind of in the home stretch here. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some snowflakes in the background. Um, again, I'm just going to use the end of a brush and some white paint and add some snowflakes in here. And I'm going to use a few different brush sizes so that I get a few different size snowflakes. All 
I'll do a few in my large size. And I'll do a few in a smaller size. And then a few in my smallest. pretty happy with that snow. I didn't want to go completely crazy. Just wanted to add a little more to the design. Um, and then the very last thing that I'm going to do um, is I'm going to take my palette knife and some white paint and I'm going to scrape it um, kind of along the border and the edge of my painting. And this is just a really fun way to kind of frame but also add some visual interest. And the idea of using your palette knife is it's not supposed to be perfect. So get that idea out of your head and just kind of have fun. Scraping this white around the edges. Now, if you really wanted to shake it up, instead of white, you could use gold. And it doesn't have to be, you know, perfectly symmetrical, but you do want to make sure that it's balanced, that you feel like there's, you know, an equal amount on all parts. Let me lift this up just a bit. So you can see the whole thing there. All right, I am pretty happy with it. I did kind of smudge some of that, um, some of those snowflakes, and I don't like that, so I'm going to self-fix that. Um, I'm going to try to. I might make more of a mess than... a fix, but we'll see. I'm pretty happy with that. That's fine. All right. That is it. That's all I have for you. This is our sweet angel. Um, she's really easy to make, really easy to change up. I cannot wait to see your version. Um, I hope you will share with me. Um, I also want to thank you for being a supporter. Um, it means the world to me that I've got people who love painting as much as I do. 
um, and want to make time uh, for their creativity. Um, remember, you can always share with me by tagging me at paint, rinse, repeat or hashtag paint, rinse, repeat. Um, and you can also share with me in my Facebook group, facebook.com slash groups slash paint, rinse, repeat. You can share anything that you create with me in there as well as any original creations. And again, thank you so much for being a supporter. Um, thank you for joining in on our supporter bonus. Can't wait to see it. I will see you next time. Have a good day, everyone.